Well, the ranger is pulling the flatbed because we have massive problems. I um, think it was a fuel filter, but we'll explain it later. But the ranger can pull 13,000 pounds. Here we are, getting off the exit to retrieve the flatbed. It's been at a diesel shop, which is most convenient to be right off the exit. We were a couple miles back down the highway, uh, you know, when the truck decided to be cantankerous and have some issues. And it was just so convenient that this place was, well, right here, the next exit. Um, and the Ranger pulled it all the way here. It was about five miles on the side of the berm, second gear, maybe getting up to 20 miles an hour. And uh, empty the flatbed weighs 13,000 pounds. So we're here. I don't know where it's sitting. I don't see it directly ahead. I don't think it morphed into that Chevy there. And we'll uh, hopefully get to see. The mechanic said he'd show me the problems uh, that we had. Where is it hiding? So Got the Ranger on. It's kind of how I, you know, bought the truck. Was uh, pulled the Ranger up and strapped it on to get home. Now I didn't. going with that. I've got more straps and things today than when we bought uh, the truck and put the Ranger on to get everything home. Uh, let's see, we hit something. I We must not have had a good angle because I did feel that hit and it looks like we hit that frame support coming up. So I didn't have issues with that loading. Front must have been a little heavier. I got more gas in the tank weighting it down. Here's all the straps. We may use one strap that came with it. We'll see to hold it down. Uh, but the truck, I need to go get that and we'll show that off what happened to the truck. Everybody say hi to Bentley. He holds down the fort here at the mechanic shop. Yeah. Okay, so we're quick showing off some of the problems. That wasn't the problem, but this was the problem. This is the crankshaft or cam sensor. Yes, I know the camera's blurry because I got a permanent scratch. And this was the original problem why it wouldn't run. Now, I thought I had fuel issues and put a new fuel filter on it there on the side of the road. And this is a little primer button that primes the fuel system. That went bad. This is, the, there's a check uh, valve. It's just a ball. That's supposed to be a ball. That was a ball. And that's supposed to keep flow from going you know, back down the line into the tank. That wasn't doing its job. So this became the primary problem before that was figured out, which was the real problem. So that's like the primary problem. This was secondary to the fact of diagnosing that on the roadside. So without having a computer to plug in, we were, we, me, dad, anybody at the farm would have never figured that out, but this was holding us back. So, uh, you know, it was <laughs> most of the cost of the fix was in parts. This was only $200 in labor and close to $400 in parts in this little box. Yay, electrical. Oh, take a look inside. That's the fuel filter we put on. The crank sensor is uh, down in the center there. I cannot see it. 
And I don't know how much they had to take apart. I'm sure it wasn't too bad. They probably just wiggled their fingers in and could find it. Oh, it's right there. You see shiny new parts. That thing. Yeah, it's right there, the shiny metal. That's where it is. That's not too bad to get to. Um, that's easy to pull. So the most time consuming thing was probably working on the, the fuel back here, putting that black primer button in and the check ball goes right, right behind it. So yeah, that black piece is new and the check ball goes in right behind it. So most of the time was probably spent priming the fuel system and the diagnostic port on the computer, put that sensor in, yeah. Time, the shop rate, I didn't look at the receipt. We can take a look at it here in a second. Really <laughs> wasn't the problem. It cost $600 to have that sensor put in and those bits for the fuel line there, the primer button and the uh, check ball valve. And like I said, the cost of parts was the highest part of this, not the labor. So we're all strapped down. The spare tire has been there. I need to tighten that. Oh, I hate those things. Good thing we have good hook points down low on the axles. Um, you know, strapping vehicles down, you want to try to get the wheels or the axles strapped down because you have the suspension. If not, you got to sit there and pull a whole bunch of suspension down. That can take a while. Um, four corners, four straps, four heavy duty straps are ready to roll. And I need to tighten this because I knocked. Uh, that one's in good, I guess. Huh, well, it didn't do, it didn't loosen as much as I thought. It's just the spare tire. It's not going to go anywhere. So we're ready to roll. And we'll take a quick look at the receipt. These lovely folks at Fastlane Automotive. Uh, this is the St. Paul exit off of 74 in Indiana. Let's see. The sensor is 85. That check ball i guess it's 51 the primer button that's not bad it's 200 dollars let's see oh they jacked up the price on something so i don't know <laughs> or maybe that's their labor maybe because there's no exact labor yes that's the parts the labor is up here this is the parts breakdown okay like that's it's really good on parts. No, that's just the time. They don't have like an hours or anything. They don't have their, uh, um, you know, an hourly shop rate listed on here, which I wish I could have figured out. But yeah, there's the parts. The crank sensor is $212. The check ball valve was 30. And then the primer button is outrageous at 155. So it's like $400 in parts, almost $200 in labor, which is probably only like two, maybe three hours of work if we're lucky. Uh, if it was closer to home, I would have figured it out myself. But not everything breaks close to home, especially when you're on the road. You know, all the farm stuff is within four or five miles, but when it takes two or three hours to get out here on the roadside, you're just kind of guessing. We guess the fuel filter problem. So we're gonna hit the road, we'll head home uh, on what should have been the Unisystem adventure. So, uh, well, let's see if we get home now, just with the Ranger on the back. Well, we made it home. The window's a little foggy because I've been sitting here talking to Bandit uh, for a hot second as I drove. And the dash is working magically. It came on halfway home. So that's delightful. We made it all in one piece. Um, we'll look at the back. Yep, Ranger's still back there. So this has been a uh, a fun, wild adventure, I guess. Maybe too wild on the day things went wrong. Uh, we'll catch you guys later.